Morning, this is Brian. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. And I'm here at Mission Trails Regional Park over at the Lake Murray section. And I'm gonna do a Trees of San Diego episode today. And this episode is gonna focus on another pepper tree. Last week I talked about the Peruvian pepper tree. Now I wanna talk about the other main pepper tree species that you'll come across here in San Diego and in lowland Southern California. This is the Brazilian pepper tree. And this is Skinnus terebinthifolius. It is a close relative of last week's video subject, the Peruvian pepper tree. And as such as a, is an evergreen large shrub to small tree in, again, the cashew family, the Anacardiaceae. The Peruvian pepper tree is generally taller, more graceful, and more willow-like with its graceful willow-like pendulous branches. Brazilian pepper trees tend to be more th thicket-forming in the wild. Now, this is a very commonly landscaped tree here in San Diego, but it is also a tree that escapes cultivation. So what you get in cultivation will likely be quite different than what you see when it spreads out into the wild. As if any of you who are watching my video are familiar with the Brazilian pepper tree, normally you're looking at a single trunk specimen in a manicured lawn. A lot of times on the side of the road in a business district, sometimes on the sides of school campuses here in San Diego, they look a lot different than what you're seeing here. So what I'm looking at is a wild naturalized specimen. Normally these trees are single trunked in cultivation because they're trimmed and pruned to be such. When they are wild grown, a lot of times they can be shrubby and massive forming massive thickets and massive shrubby trees. Massive short stature, but massive trunks, multiple trunks. And I'm gonna get into why these trees do this more in the wild as opposed to in cultivation or why they appear to do it more in the wild. But let's get into a few characteristics of the Brazilian pepper tree, Skinnus terebinthifolius. Now, as you might have seen last week's Trees of San Diego episode, the Peruvian pepper tree, again, was more willow-like, graceful, arching, pendulous branches. This one is more widespread and not pendulous. It doesn't have the weeping texture that Skinnus mole does, the Peru uh, Peruvian pepper tree. The leaves are actually a little bit different. So again, we have pinnately compound leaves, as you see here. This whole thing is a leaf, right here. This is a whole leaf. So it's divided into several oppositely arranged leaflets. Now, the leaves themselves, as you can see here, are alternate. So the leaves themselves are alternate along the twig, but the leaflets are opposite one another on the rachis, the leaflet stalk. And unlike the Peruvian pepper tree, these trees have a darker, richer green, sometimes with a slight bluish cast to them, slightly bluish cast, but mostly a darker, richer green color. And again, the leaflets are wider and the twigs are not pendulous at their ends. So sometimes they can be somewhat upright spread or spreading. So Peruvian pepper tree can be spreading, but pendulous at the tips of the branches. So this is a native of South America also, Brazil, and probably a few other areas, other countries nearby. And this one tends to be a little more tropical and requires a little bit more moisture in general than the Peruvian pepper tree, which tends to like drier areas. So let's go into a few characteristics. Again, we're looking at the leaves here and then we have these brownish twigs with the characteristic uh, twig structure of Anacardiaceae with uh, elevated leaf scars and small buds. 
grayish twig, grayish twigs as you move down, and then the bark is kind of a nice, kind of a nice furrow, a little, little bit similar to the Peruvian pepper tree, but not quite as stringy. There's a stringiness, a stringiness, stringy quality to the bark, but not nearly as deep as the Peruvian pepper tree, but still from a distance quite similar. You see these more mature trunks, you do have some interlacing furrows. So let me get a couple pictures of this tree and then I'll go move in and talk about some more of the characteristics of the Brazilian pepper tree and why this is actually a potentially much more invasive species than the Peruvian pepper tree. So I was looking at these, wonder again why these look so much different than the ones in your yard. Well, it's because the ones in people's yards and in businesses are trimmed a lot more neatly, more of, an, more of, a, more of a single trunk tree as opposed to a multi-stem shrubby thicket like this. These trees are generally, generally get to less than 40 feet tall they can occasionally get a little bit larger but again these are generally smaller trees in the sense of their height however with age they can get some quite girthy trunks and i've seen a lot of them planted here in southern california that get quite large that have maybe they'll be short they're short trees generally under 40 feet tall but they'll have these large trunks on them and like the Peruvian pepper tree, this is a very resinous species of tree. You can see all this sappy exudate right here. Very resinous tree, just like the Peruvian cousin. So cut wood, cut branches, sometimes little nicks and scrapes will ooze out a, an amberous sap. So again, it's a very, very resinous tree and also does have an aroma when you crush the leaves kind of has a camphory swedish camphory aroma so it's an aromatic tree as well like the peruvian pepper tree but the smells are not exactly the same it's uh, sometimes lacking scent acuity is kind of hindering sometimes to describe it but it does kind of have a sweet peppery aroma hence partially hence the name pepper tree now this one doesn't have any on it, but like the Peruvian pepper tree, small, really tiny, little tiny panicles of whitish flowers, whitish five petal flowers. The flowers are so tiny, you really have to get up close to them, maybe with a magnifying glass, just like the Peruvian pepper tree. And then in fruit, their fruits are also red droop, droops or berry-like fruits. And I'm gonna go up to one that has some droops on this one doesn't have any don't mind the sound of the jets marine corps air station's got some jets flying around but yeah i mentioned that just like the peruvian pepper tree we get these red berry like fruits a lot of times during late fall and winter so sometimes this plant could be kind of celebrated like a Christmas berry type ornamental. You see here, after those little tiny flowers are fertilized, then they become, again, these red, these red droops or red berry-like fruits that start off light green and then eventually grade into a rich, red with a little bit of a pinkish overtone so it is quite a cat it is quite a quite a nice sight to behold when this tree's in full fruit and a lot of times it'll be in full fruit around christmas so i know in some places 
they celebrate Christmas in subtropical and tropical places with this tree as an ornamental. So it does have some ornamental value and it's been used as an ornamental for many years, for decades. Maybe not quite as long as the Peruvian pepper tree, but it's been around for a while. So now I wanna start talking about some of the cautionary tales when dealing with Brazilian pepper tree because this plant can be very, very widespread and naturalized. So it can be very invasive. So you notice, you might've noticed that first thicket I was visiting, how there were just so many trunks and stems growing all over the place. Well, it's because this tree has a, an extensive root system that a lot of people would consider invasive. The roots are very widespread and they can uplift sidewalks and potentially get into sewer systems because these trees, these trees and shrubs, their roots are seeking water. Notice this is growing pretty close to Lake Murray, which is right over here. This is Lake Murray. These plants like to be a little bit wetter than your Peruvian pepper tree cousin, counterpart. So these like to be in wetlands and they establish colonies in wetlands through root shoots and also through seeds. So this one is very well adapted to reproducing by seeds and by root shoots, thereby being a very effective colonizer. So let me go over here and show you what I mean by an effective colonizer. As I'm walking along this path Here's another one right here. Here's a Brazilian pepper tree right here. This one, I'm assuming probably got started by a portion of the root system, but I can't be 100% sure. And then, just walked about 50 yards. Here's some more. Here's another Brazilian pepper tree. Some of these, I'm assuming, are probably started by seed. Sometimes the roots can be very extensive on these plants. Here's another Brazilian pepper tree thicket right here. So it's a very, very hardcore colonizer of spots that at least have some decent underground moisture. Not, not quite as drought tolerant. And places I believe like Hawaii, Pretty sure Florida, Florida is supposed to be very invasive and it grows very well in Florida's climate. So these have a propensity to naturalize wherever they can get their roots into an area of enough moisture. And you see that these are wild growing specimens, so they tend to grow more like a thicket. You can see here, there's a set of stems there, a set of stems there. A set of stems here and I'm just about willing to bet my paychecks that these are all from one root system I don't know if it's it might be the same root system as this but that I'm not as confident about but they do spread several yards away from the parent tree so oh here we go here's another one here's a younger set right here younger shoot another set of shoots right here all from the root system, all from the same root system. So you'll notice, if you have one in your yard, it's going to try to do what it would do when it's spread out in the wild. It's gonna try to grow these col colony, these clonal colonies. And that's what these are known to do. So if you ever, you ever have a, a, a Brazilian pepper tree in your yard, you'll notice these little shoots coming up from the, gr from the ground little tiny shoots little tiny shoots kind of like this right here see these that is a root shoot a lot of times your lawn will be littered with a bunch of root shoots from these brazilian pepper trees because they're trying to do what they normally do in the wild which is spread out form clonal colonies and again what i was mentioning earlier that they don't seem to do it in cultivation unless you look beneath the surface. Well, 
when you're mowing over these root shoots or yanking them out, that is actually what they do in the wild as well. So you really pay attention. If you have a Brazilian pepper tree in your yard and you get shoots coming up, most of the time, those are gonna be shoots coming up from the root system. And you'll notice they go several feet away from the tree. Now, they also produce prodigious amount of seedlings as well. And when I lived in Orange County, I lived in an apartment complex in Orange County, we had a Brazilian pepper tree in the front of the apartment complex. It's a really small three unit complex. And we would get root shoots coming up all the time. And then not only that, seedlings would come up everywhere. So these are very prodigious producers of seed. As you notice on that one specimen, they seed a lot into the landscape. So while these do have ornamental value, you also have to be cautious that it doesn't invade wildlands. There are places here in San Diego where these things will form tons and tons of thickets. I've been hiking in our coastal canyons. Tecolote Canyon is one place where you'll find tons of pepper tree thickets in some spots. And they get to those massive multi-trunk behemoths that you see, especially near human settlements. So there is a cautionary tale to be woven when it comes to Skinnus terebinthifolius. Now, I'm gonna shoot a couple pictures of these thickets, and on the way back, I'm gonna walk along the paved, the paved bike path and show a larger thicket as I get ready to wrap this video up. more over here too. I told you they take over everything. All those tall bushes by the fence. They're all Brazilian pepper trees. I'm coming up to a pretty big thicket of them right now. Yeah, they love being near Lake Murray. See what I mean? These things form huge clumsy thickets. There's another big thicket of them right here. This is what they look like when they get established in the wild. Wow. So as you can see here, lots of pepper tree thickets. These are all Brazilian pepper trees. So I'm guessing I made my point. But these things get established like crazy. These things just get established everywhere. So, again, I think some of the, the major pros to the Brazilian pepper tree, ornamental, aromatic ornamental tree, pleasant fragrance, Beautiful red berry like fruit. Really good shade because these can get very dense and provide really good shade. Good shade trees. But you just gotta be mindful of the potential problems like root systems that are very invasive, very high invasive potential in the wild. And People who are allergic to sumac and plants in the cashew family might also experience some 
skin rashes from those type but probably nothing like you would experience with poison oak or poison ivy other cashew family plants but I always have to throw that in there when we talk about a cashew family plant so people who are susceptible to irritation from strong sap might want to be careful with this but gonna have to showcase a pretty resilient tree that seems to like being here in San Diego and in low elevations here in Southern California uh, one thing is that these are a little bit a little bit less cold tolerant than your uh, than your Peruvian pepper tree these ones are a little more sensitive to the cold so further inland you'll further inland in lower foothills definitely below 2,000 feet you're gonna definitely definitely need to keep these protected from the cold because they probably won't take much below freezing but again caution is to be to caution while growing these it needs to be exercised because these can be extremely and are very invasive so there you have it Brazilian pepper tree Skinnis terebinthifolius from here at Lake Murray part of Mission Trails Regional Park. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on another tree to San Diego very soon.